105 and 95.5. Cut the call! 105 and 95.5. I'm Dave Duran with Zach Myers of Shinedown. How's it going, man? Good, man. I'm uh, here in Baltimore today and uh, getting ready for a show tonight. And uh, It's been good. We're like, we're exactly halfway into the tour right now. Well, I was going to ask you, how is the tour going? And what does it take to mount a shine down level tour? Not just with the band, but all over. I don't think I've ever asked that of anybody before. Oh, uh, you can't really see, but I have a lot of extra gray hair. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I designed this show, this tour. Right. Um, so it was a lot. And me and my friend Mitch uh, Schellinger helped me do all the lighting and stuff with it. But Mitch and I designed it. And um, it's a big tour. You know, it's, um, it's the, definitely the coolest production we've ever done. It takes a lot. I mean, I, honestly, it was about three and a half months of, of straight work before you even play the first note of music, you know, because I take stage design very seriously because for me, you know, how I design something is I like our band, right? I'm a fan of our band. So if I'm a fan of our band, what do I want to see? Well, the first thing I wanted to see was how much, how can I expand the first row by a hundred percent? And so that's why when you, when you walk into the arena, when we play there, like you see the stage, the stage is almost in the round. So there's a, there's a lot more first row, basically. It's, there's not a regular stage. So the stage basically is in all the way out into the crowd. And that's the whole, it's not like a thrust that we walk out on for two, three songs. Like that is the stage. Um, I saw a rig, de- uh, a rig rundown on, uh, online with you uh, a couple of days ago in preparation for talking to you. And um, you were showing your guitars. So... <laughs> How many guitar and there was a ton of them. How many guitars do you actually tour with? And how many guitars um, do you have? I have about 210, give or take. Wow. Um, if you ask my guitar tech how many I tour with, he'll say too many. <laughs> um, I think it's like 18 to 20 out on the road. I and- play a different guitar every I play a different guitar every song why let's let's tell the folks why so many different guitars i mean when you go to a show and you see the guitar player swap out for another guitar for a different song can you explain to the folks why that is for me for me there's there's three kind of main reasons uh, obviously the first being tuning you know we i think we have six to seven different tunings um and then the the second being sound you know i want to kind of recreate what's on the record as, as best as I can. So I'll try to do that. Um, and then third being feel, you know, some guitars, I need a little bit of a thinner neck on cause I'm doing maybe a faster solo or something like that. So it helps out. Um, but there's, there, there's a, there's a myriad of reasons that you would do it. Um, I, you know, I love guitars. So for me, it's about playing a new guitar every song. And that's what's good for me is my tech drew. He loves guitars too. So it's for him, it's really fun to be like, yeah, he's like, you know, I'm always like, oh, did I got to get, you know, I have two vaults full of guitars out there. Wow. And he's, he's like, dude, I love it. I love having all these guitars out here. And actually, I'm actually at lunch right now uh, with my um, head of artist relations for PRS. So it's funny that you, you're bringing up guitars because that's who I'm with right now. How do you prepare for show days? Is there anything that you do uh, mentally or is there any rituals or, you know, you know how sports figures are, they have their superstitions and stuff like that. Do you do anything like that uh, on show day to prepare? Yeah, um, I, we we all kind of have our own rituals. For me, like today, I will the band will leave the hotel at like two, get to the venue. Uh, we haven't been sound checking a lot on this tour, um, just because technology now, man. Like our our sound guy will record. You know, he records every show, and then literally can play the show back from the night before and have it come up in his console and he can mix the show from the night before and make it sound like it needs to sound that night for that room. So technology has come so far. Is that, is that a, is, is, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is that, is that a pro tools rig that you use for that? Well, yeah, like, uh, I think it's, um, I think it's a uh, digital performer we use and then the, he, he can run it back. Cause we record every show anyway, just for the archives we always have, but he can run it back through his console. And if, if you know, I know, understand a lot of people won't understand this, but like when you mix a show, every single thing is an input, you know, mm-hmm. every guitar mic is an input. So he can mix that 
from the night before to make it, you know, every room's different. Every arena is different. So he can mix that from the night before and make it sound good for that room. So we haven't been sound checking. So usually get there. If we don't sound check, usually we're, the band's working out by like four o'clock, four 30. Um, and then that's kind of when my day starts. And then after that, I go in the chiropractor and I go into massage for like an hour and a half. Uh, I'll meet with whatever guests I have. If I have friends or whatever, I'll hang with them for a minute. And then I start getting ready for the show. So like once the, once the roller coaster starts, it starts, you know. Let's talk about Planet Zero, the album. Uh, it's supposed to be out on the 22nd, but it got pushed back to July 1st. Yes. And can you tell the folks why? Um, we are a, there's two reasons. We're a, a physical band. We still, we still stream obviously really well, but, uh, people want to, people want to physically listen to the band. They want to buy a CD. They want to buy a vinyl. They, right. Even now cassettes are coming back, which is very odd to me. Right. You're talking about but, me. Um, You're talking about me there. Right? Yeah. You no. Know, yeah. I mean, me too. <laughs> honestly, I would, I, I, I listen to vinyl more than I listen to streaming music. Um, but you know, we, you want to have a good first week. So it was, we didn't want to just release it digitally and then have the vinyl come later. We wanted everything to come out. And the second reason is because, you know, attention, attention was a concept record we're trying to be a concept record. Once you, we had written a certain song, we kind of knew that we're going in a direction here. <clears throat> Planet Zero is not an intentional concept record, but ended up being more of a concept record than attention, attention ever was. And um, I feel like it needs to be listened to together as a community because it's, it's the record's kind of about community. It's about this place that we could possibly be headed if we don't kind of steer the ship around, you know? Right. And so I think it just needs to be listened to. Everyone needs to listen to it together at once, you know? And there's people who only want to listen to this band physically. So that's why we pushed it back. And Because honestly as stupid as it sounds and, and I feel like every political pawn uses it as an excuse, but it's supply chain issues. We couldn't, we couldn't get the vinyl in time and we ordered it almost a year ago. Let's talk about planet zero, the song. Um, what was that born out of? What we're living in right now. We feel like a little bit that we're on planet zero. We feel like that, you know, we live in this society where, people are deleting their grandmother off Facebook because their grandmother voted for someone different than they voted for, you know? And it's like, there's no conversation anymore. It's just, you're canceled or you're, you know, now I don't like you because you, you think differently than I do, you know? And I kind of miss, you know, eighties politics or nineties politics where it was like, you can still disagree. And I was like, ah, well, whatever you do. You believe this. I believe this, you know, Hey, you know, we're, we're canceling people over opinions now. We're trying to ruin people's careers and how their family eats food because of what they think. But, right. You know, honestly, I don't. I haven't watched the news in two years. Um, I don't. You know, because I, what I found and something Brent and I discussed a lot was, you know, when you're doing this and you're just looking at your phone and you're, you're going like this, uh -huh. and then you and then you put the phone and it, everything's bad, right? Everything you're reading is bad. The world's bad. Every, everybody sucks. Everyone's bad. And then you you kind of put the phone down and you you look around and you're like. Oh no, the world's fine. The world's only shitty in the phone. Like you look around, there's people trying to help each other. There's people with empathy. There's people trying to be better. There's people trying to get along with other people. But I don't know, man. It's like this weird it is silk a weird, screen thing. It is a weird thing. It's like it's like the keyboard. Everybody hides behind that. And I don't get it. I'm with you. No, I just grew up in the I just grew up in the era where if you if, you know if you said something about somebody and you were just utterly rude about it, you would just get punched in the face. And I kind of missed that a little bit. I totally get it. I totally get it. You mentioned uh, the band works out. Um, so let me ask you, uh, Brent has slimmed down a lot. He's batted back some demons and, and come out great on the other side of everything. And he continues to work out. I, I see his uh, videos online. Uh, and it, it was he instrumental in getting the band to work out? Or did you always kind of do that? Because I know that he's like way into it. No, I never did it before Brent did it. I was always, but I was always kind of a skinny kid, you know, and same with Eric, same with Barry. Uh, Eric always worked out. Eric was, Eric, Eric, you know, Eric can not run for two years and then take off and run five miles. I can't run 500 feet without getting shin splints. So, you know, um, so it was, it was truly was Brent. 
I don't remember even Barry ever working out. None of us worked out before Eric ran. He never was like a big, huge gym guy. And then when Brent started doing it, you know, it was more of a brotherhood thing. You know, I mean, like, you know, if you're going to do this, we're going to do it with you. And I remember that time, you know, he lost like 85 pounds. Because on Sound of Madness, it's weird. It's such a weird time because on Sound of Madness, obviously, it's our biggest record at that time. And he was in the worst shape of his life, you know. And we had the biggest songs we had ever had at that point, you know. And, you know, but I remember that time after that, right? Like, remember, let's, dude, we just, you know, we look like, a, you know, a Vanity Fair cover. You know, like all four of us had eight packs and you know what I mean? Like <laughs> we, were, we were working out every single day, you know, and it was, you know, and we still do. We, we carry that tradition on now. You know, we, we all, we don't, the last tour we just did, we all did still work out together. This tour is a little different. Um, you know, Eric's, uh, Eric's always kind of battled with some back stuff. He's got a couple herniated discs in his back. So, you know, if, one, if, if, if we're going pretty hard that day and doing like really physical stuff, like up and down off the floor, He's got to be really careful, man, because we need him out here. And he's had to can't you know, we've had to we've had to cancel shows before because of his back. So we don't want to. Well, in addition to you know working out just for working out and and feeling better, I mean that's a great team building thing, and it obviously gets you pumped for for the show. I mean because that's a lot of running around. It's pretty physical. One hundred percent, man. And it's you know honestly, you know I think that the days that we don't work out, it, you feel like I don't know you feel a little sluggish up there on stage. You know, you feel like you didn't kind of get it in. And, you know, we do, you know, we, there's days where we go crazy hard and we'll do a 90 minute workout. And there's days where we'll do a 30 minute workout, you know, just, just to get it in. But, you know, I don't think, I think if you've ever seen a shine down show, people, people, like people don't, some people who haven't seen it don't realize like our show is physical. Like our oh, show is a workout. Absolutely. It's a, our show is a full contact sport. You know, <laughs> I've seen shine down and you are, you are correct. And uh, Brent, even before he lost the weight and got uh, got in shape, he was a ball of energy and, and a ball of positivity on, on stage. Even before. coming off balconies and all kind of stuff. So, um, on your days off, what do you like to do? Um, honestly, I'm a I'm a kind of I, I don't sit in the room. Um, I'm a me, our security guy, our merch guy, and a couple of people usually go to movies. Um, I'm a huge foodie. So I'm, I'm a big local, like I don't really eat chain restaurants. So I'll go to, I'll, you know, I'll find like a good local spot if I'm feeling, whatever I'm feeling. If it's, if it's, you know, um, like Mexican food or, or Japanese food or whatever, like I'll, you know, whatever I'm feeling, I'll go find like a good local spot for that. Um, yeah. And then I'll, you know, we'll, we'll go on walks. If there's like any, any kind of terrain around, we'll go hiking. You know, we, we're all, we all, you know, we're in a band that's been around this long. It's crazy how well that we still get along and really well, love and have, respect each other. You've been around a long time. In fact, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. You, not too long from now, a few more years and you'll be rock and roll hall of fame eligible. How does that make you feel? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's the same. It's the same thing as the Grammys to me, you know, like to me, like when sound of madness, when sound of madness had six number one songs, on one record in the year that it came out when that hasn't been done and you know since like I, mean, I think Adele did it it really hasn't been done since um it hadn't been done in probably 15 years before that and it didn't get nominated for a Grammy I was like I could li I could live there's not a physical way I could care less about this the Grammys are kind of a joke it's nice to have one uh I get it I don't have honestly I, I, I tell people all the time like I think people think I'm bluffing when I say this I I couldn't care less and honestly I'd give it to my parents well, it, wouldn't even, it would it would never that thing would never go inside my house. Right. I could I get a Grammy every night at nine o'clock when I walk on stage and there's ten thousand people. Bands you like to listen to on the bus, and I'll let you go. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna let a lot of people down here. Uh, <laughs> I don't listen I don't listen to a ton of rock music. If I do, it's Fan Lizzy, it's U2, it's REM. Um, I listen to a lot of singer songwriter stuff. I'm really into this guy Zach Bryan right now. Uh -huh. um i love turnpike troubadours jason isbell is a really good friend of mine um I, I love his music um a lot of singers james taylor jackson brown that's kind of my like I was, oh you know what i was listening to finger 11 the other night i got i got on a finger 11 kick again the other night i was listening to a ton of finger 11 um yeah that's kind of that's kind of me i don't really i kind of listen to like john Mayer. like i listen to like stuff that our fans are going to make fun of me for listening to 
That's okay. Uh, what do you th what do you think about the bands that are opening for you? The Pretty Reckless, and of course later on in the summertime, uh, Jelly Roll. I mean, the Jelly Roll was. I mean, that was that was my idea to bring Jelly Roll out here. I love. I love. You know, I'm not a big in genre touring guy. Like I don't want to bring out three actor rock bands to play with us because then everyone just gets you know it's the same sound almost all night. You know, so I I really like kind of pushing those boundaries a little bit. Um, I love Jelly. And, and the fact that he's doing what he's doing as an independent artist, I would um, I would tell everyone listening to call and request his songs because, you know, think about the fact that this guy's doing this without a label. He's doing this without anything, you know, and he's, and he's past number five on rock radio right now. That's amazing to me. Yeah. He sells out shows. Um, as far as Pretty Reckless goes, uh, they couldn't be sweeter people. I love their I love their music. I, I'll be honest, I didn't ever really listen to a ton of them before they came out here. I obviously knew who they were, which is why we wanted to bring them out, and I knew that their sound would be good. But like, they're a straight up rock and roll band. I mean, no click track, no nothing. They're just they're up there. Four people up there playing rock and roll. Wow. And that I, it's, a, it's a little bit of a lost start, and I kind of dig that. Well, Zach Myers of Shinedown, thank you for taking a little bit of time and uh, talking to us today. And um, thanks for having me. And not a problem. I'll uh, I'll let you go so you can get back to your lunch. And we'll see you at Pine Knob later on this summer. I'm very much looking forward to it. All right, man. Zach Myers of Shinedown, thank you very much. You have a great day. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Real rock. Rock 105 and 95.5.